I'm Keith Olbermann, and this is The Resistance. There have been countless crazy and or impeachable things done by Donald Trump or in his name since the inauguration. These are just the top 50. Here they are, as fast as I can blow through them. January 20th, bounds into the White House, leaving the First Lady standing alone by the car. Insists at an inaugural ball that it stopped raining as he started to give his inaugural address, when in fact it started raining as he started to speak. January 21st, goes to speak at the CIA memorial wall, reportedly bringing his own staff with him to applaud him. Claims he holds the record for the most Time magazine covers. He actually has 11, Richard Nixon, 55. Claims that the crowd at his inauguration extended to the Washington Monument. Has his press secretary, who is a Melissa McCarthy character, shout a lie to the reporters, quote, this was the largest audience to ever witness an inauguration, period. January 22nd implies none of the Women's March participants had voted. After repeatedly stating he would release his tax returns after an audit was complete, Kellyanne Conway says, quote, he's not going to release his tax returns. January 23rd tells congressional leaders he would have won popular vote if it had not been for three to five million illegal votes. January 24th tweets a panoramic photo of the inauguration as evidence of his crowd size claims, doesn't notice photo is mistakenly dated January 21st, the day after his inauguration, claims carnage in Chicago, threatens to send in, quote, the feds without ever saying if he means the military or Elliot Ness and his untouchables. January 25th makes up story about two people being murdered during Obama's Chicago farewell speech, threatens to cut off federal funds to sanctuary cities, demands investigation into non-existent voter fraud, specifically voters registered in more than one state, doesn't seem to notice that among voters registered in more than one state are Steve Bannon, Sean Spicer, Steve Mnuchin, son-in-law Jared Kushner, and his own daughter Tiffany, cites Pew Research data to support his voter fraud claims. The author of the report refutes the voter fraud claims, then claims Pew Researcher is groveling and suppressing the truth. Tells interviewer about imaginary three to five million fraudulent votes. Quote, if you look at it, they all voted for Hillary. They all voted for Hillary. They didn't vote for me. I don't believe I got one. Okay, these are people that voted for Hillary Clinton ignores logic that his conspiracy theory thus requires that Democrats planted five million illegal voters around the country but forgot to put any of them in the states where just 77,000 votes cost Clinton the election. January 26th, reported to have personally pressured United States Park Service to support his inauguration crowd exaggeration after campaigning against Clinton for slovenly handling of classified data and private email, is reported to have tied the POTUS Twitter account to private email, and to be using only one-step security, and to be tweeting from what appears to be a five-year-old non-secure phone. January 27th, cites voting fraud expert who claims three million illegal votes, but who has never produced any of the evidence he has repeatedly promised issues statement commemorating International Holocaust Remembrance Day that does not include the words Jew, Judaism, or Jewish, institutes a refugee ban on Muslim nations on a day that recalls how America turned its back on refugees from Nazi Germany. January 28th, Muslim ban is so hastily introduced no one knows how it applies to those with green cards and border and customs agents are left guessing what to do next in phone call with Prime Minister of Australia, becomes angered about agreed upon refugee resettlement deal, reportedly hangs up on Prime Minister. January 29th, falsely claims Muslim ban is just an offshoot of the reevaluation of immigrant vetting once ordered by Obama. This was only in Iraq. Dismisses anti-ban statement by Senators Graham and McCain by calling them, quote, former presidential candidates says nothing as purported white supremacist Trump fan allegedly opens fire at a Quebec City mosque, killing six, injuring five. January 30th claims weekend airport chaos owes not to his Muslim and refugee ban, but to Delta computer problems and the, quote, fake tears of Senator Schumer, ignoring that Schumer's great-grandmother and seven of her nine siblings were murdered by the Nazis after they were unable to become refugees. January 31st, among those confirming they were detained at a U.S. airport during Muslim ban crisis because he once visited Iran, the former prime minister of Norway. February 1st, 
commemorates start of Black History Month by seemingly implying he does not realize Frederick Douglass has been dead since 1895, then complains about CNN. Vice President Pence commemorates the start of Black History Month by tweeting tribute to Abraham Lincoln. White House does not issue readout of weekend phone call between Trump and Vladimir Putin, reportedly because White House switched off the recorder. Attacks Australian refugee deal, calling the 1,250 refugees, quote, thousands of illegal immigrants. Revealed by a personal physician to be taking doses of the drug Propecia to promote hair growth, possible side effects include dizziness, weakness, feeling like you might pass out, and, quote, abnormal ejaculation. February 2nd, at National Prayer Breakfast, ask for prayers for Arnold Schwarzenegger's TV ratings, and also at Prayer Breakfast, in front of religious leaders from 70 countries, says, quote, the hell with it. Adjust sanctions against the sales of cybersecurity materials to the Russian FSB, the same spy agency accused of blackmailing him. Administration claims Yemen raid was authorized by Obama. Two Obama administration national security advisors publicly state this is not true. Advisor Propaganda Barbie, Kellyanne Conway, complains that media has ignored one of the justifications for the Muslim ban, namely the Bowling Green Massacre. There was no Bowling Green Massacre. Conway claims she misspoke. Cosmopolitan and TMZ will later report she had already cited the same event, a fictional massacre, in interviews with them. Tweets that Iran has been, quote, formally put on notice, even though the phrase means nothing diplomatically or militarily. Places on the national security staff a man who helped add the infamous 16 words to George W. Bush's 2003 State of the Union address. February 3rd, tweets about a, quote, new radical Islamic terrorist with a knife at the Louvre Museum in Paris. The attack was at the Louvre Mall. There was one minor injury. The alleged perpetrator is Egyptian and would not have been prevented from entering the U.S. by the Trump ban. Trump still has not mentioned the Quebec mosque attack. The Pentagon posts terrorist video supposedly obtained during that Yemen raid to prove the raid was worth it. Administration pulls down that terrorist video when it turns out that terrorist video has been on the internet since 2007. February 4th, in clip revealed in advance of the Super Bowl interview, says he respects Vladimir Putin. Interviewer says, quote, but he's a killer, though. Putin's a killer. Trump replies, there are a lot of killers. We've got a lot of killers. What, you think our country's so innocent? Pressed, he implies those killers could include those involved in the war in Iraq. Deputy editor of Wall Street Journal editorial page then tweets, never in history has a president slandered his country like this, and he's goddamned right. February 5th finishes two-day-long siege of Twitter attacks against the Washington state judge who ruled against the Muslim ban, writing of possible terrorism, quote, if something happens, blame him and court system is reported to have signed the executive order placing Steve Bannon on the National Security Council without fully reading it first. Super Bowl interviewer now presses him for data to support illegal voting claims, and he replies, forget that, forget all that, and then implies registration rolls prove him right, suggesting he doesn't realize that not everybody who is registered votes. February 6th, after one poll showing his first approval rating at a record low 44%, and a CBS poll showing his Muslim ban opposed by 51 to 45%, and a CNN poll showing it rejected 53 to 47%, tweets, right out of George Orwell, any negative polls are fake news, and deliberately lies to officers and troops at U.S. Central Command that the media does not want to report terrorist attacks, quote, they have their reasons, and you understand that. In any other context, business or country, Trump's supporters would now be organizing his removal from authority, even if it were only for his own good. Get him out of here. Resist. Peace.